Hello students, welcome to YouTube channel Vidya for Success. Dear students, from this video, let us start a new chapter, Analysis of Univariate Data. Dear students, we know what is a data. Data is nothing but collection of raw facts, figures or also referred as statistics. Okay. So usually data, when we talk about statistics, need to be in numerical form. Then only we can analyze, then only it is relevant for statistics. So data can be of two forms, univariate data and bivariate data. So what is a univariate data? Nothing but a data which is representing only one variable. Let us say if we have collected data with respect to only height of students, then that is univariate data. Let us say we have collected data with respect to the rainfall, then that is univariate data. On the other hand, if there is a data concerned with two variables, let us say marks corresponding to mathematics as well as statistics subject of let us say 50 students. So then this is bivariate data. So because here we are having marks for mathematics as well as marks for statistics for a particular individual. So then that is a bivariate data. So what is univariate data? Nothing but data corresponding to a particular only one variable then that is referred as univariate data okay so data with regard to a single variable is called univariate data so here as you can notice here here there are few students they are measuring their heights okay so in case if we talk only about their heights nothing but only we are considering only single variable then that is referred as a univariate in case if we have considered height as well as their weights then it would have become bivariate okay so what is univariate data data with regard to a single variable is called as a univariate data now let us study what is meant by the measures of frequency distribution so what is a frequency distribution a table representing the frequencies taken by a variable that is referred as a frequency distribution table so this particular table represents different characteristics nothing but they can be referred as measures let us say there are 50 students take an exam for 100 marks out of these 50 students let us say some of them have scored 40 marks some of them have scored 65 marks now we have plotting them in terms of table after plotting them in terms of table we can say how many number of students have scored the marks between 0 to 10 how many of them have scored between marks 10 to 20, similarly 20 to 30, for 30 to 40, it goes on up till 100. So once we get this frequency distribution table, we can now say, we can now measure this frequency distribution in different ways, in different terms. That is what generally referred as the characterization of a frequency distribution or as generally frequency distribution has characterized by the following measures. What are the different measures? By just going through the frequency distribution, we can identify a lot of things. What are, what are those different things which we can identify, which we can measure? So first one is measures of central tendency. Second is measures of dispersion, measures of skewness. And the fourth one is measures of kurtosis. Let us understand them. So what is uh, measures of uh, central tendency? So the central tendency is nothing but Please notice here in the di here, uh, diagram, here I have considered scattered da data. Okay, the data has been scattered over the x, y plane. So here, at a particular point, all the data have grouped. Okay, isn't it? So the data have been grouped here. So this is nothing but a central point where the data are aligned to a particular point. Uh, they are completely grouped together. Nothing but this is a measure of central tendency. So what is the tendency of data to fall near a particular point? Nothing but it is also referred as averages. So the first measure of frequency distribution is nothing but measure of central tendency. As you can notice here, let us say there are 50 different students are there. Let us consider them. So some of them have scored, let us say most of them have scored, let us say 60 marks. But some of them have scored 99, 100 like that. Some of them have scored, let us say, 10 marks, 7 marks. But on an average, most of them have scored 65 to 70 marks like, like this. Okay. So this is what 
we can understand by going through the frequency distribution. So that is the first characteristic, the first char characterization factor that we can study using frequency distribution is measure of central tendency. The second measure of frequency distribution is measure of dispersion. So what do you mean by dispersion? I just told you, uh, if there are 50 students taken up the examination, uh, some, uh, most of them have scored, let us say, in this particular area. So between, let us say, 30 to uh, 50 marks in this thing. And uh, some of them have deviated from the central value. If this is the average point, average value, some of them have deviated, some of them have taken 10 marks, some of them 20 marks. Similarly, some of them have 70, they may have scored 100 even. So, what is this question? What is the variation that can be observed from the central point? If this is a central point, if this is the average, what is the deviation? What is the variation that we can observe? So, that is referred to as measure of dispersion, also simply called as variation. And the third measure of frequency distribution is measure of skewness. So, what is the skewness? Skewness can also be termed as simply referred as asymmetric. What is meant by asymmetric? After plotting the frequency distribution, if you want to convert them into a, a um, graphical form, diametrical form, so in the diagram, how the frequency distribution will appear? It might take a symmetrical form. Symmetry means when we divide this particular graph, you will get two equal half. Or else it can be a positive skew, or it can be a negative skew. Okay, so the second, third measure of uh, frequency distribution is measure of skewness. Similarly, the last fourth measure is measure of kurtosis. What is meant by kurtosis? Nothing but peakedness. If I plot the frequency distribution in terms of a graph, how the graph will look like, whether there is a peakedness or it is a flat one or a normal one. So, here as you can notice, it is a very peaked graph. It is referred as a leptokurtic, mesokurtic and completely fit the uh, uh, graph is completely flat one and it is referred as platykurtic. So, using the frequency distribution, we can characterize, we can say what the frequency distribution is saying. Now, let us understand the measure of central tendency now. Okay. So, what is the central tendency? Let us say that we have collected data of 50 students who have appeared for a particular examination of 100 marks. After collecting the data, uh, we have uh, classified them after classification we have represented them in the tabular format once the uh, once the data is present in the tabular format we can easily say how many of them have scored between uh, 10 to 20 how many of them scored between 30 to 40 like that we can easily say but still if we want to arrive at a one single figure suddenly if someone uh, from outside comes to our uh, class if they inquire uh, what is uh, your class percentage overall percentage or overall average then we cannot easily say by this particular frequency distribution. Then what we need, we need one central value which will sum up the overall figures taken by all the 50 students. So this is referred as measure of central tendency. So in case if we are having different set of values, then it will be very complex. In order to reduce the complexity, we need to arrive at a one single value, one single figure. So that can be easily done with the help of this averages or measure of central tendency. Not only that, in case if you want to compare uh, one class student with another class student or one college with another college, then the best way is to consider their averages. Instead of considering, instead of comparing individual student, I will be considering the average or percentage of one per entire class. That percentage or average will be com compared with the another class. So easily I can make out which particular class is doing good. So, in order to average, come at an, uh, one in a single value, I need to consider the measure of central tendency. What is the tendency of data falling towards a particular point that is referred as central tendency? Okay. So, henceforth, we will be studying the measures of central tendency. So, what is central tendency? The property of concentration of values around a central value in a data is called central tendency. Next, it is also simply it is also referred as average. What is what is meant by average? Let us say in the class there are 50 students, each one of them taken different set of values. But I want to arrive at an average value, I want to uh, uh, arrive at a one single value. 
something that is referred as average. What is average? Average is nothing but it is a single value that represents the entire mass of data. There are 50 students, yes, each one have taken their own marks. But to sum up, I will be saying the class average is 73 percent. Nothing but almost so uh, each one of them have scored different marks but it is coming towards 73 percent some of them may be above 73 percent some of them may be below 73 percent but it is gr the grouping has happened towards that particular value that is 73 percent that is nothing but average what is average it is a single value that represents the entire mass of data next uh, to be a good average there are certain requirements essential things so now let us study what are the essentials of good average so the first essential is it should be easy to understand and simple to calculate so there are different averages that we are going to study later but if you want to refer them as a very good average then it need to be easy to understand and easy to simple to calculate you know, the, the, there will be little mathematical formulas which we will be using them, but they need to be very simple and easy to understand. Then the second essential thing is, it should be based on all the observations. If I want to come at the average value of 50 students marks, then I cannot leave some uh, 20 odd students who have, whose scores are very less. I cannot consider only 30 students in a class. I need to consider all the 50 students. Then only it is a good a way of what is coming at to an average central value same thing here also if i want to call a particular average as a good one then it should be based on all the observations Sec third one is it should be well defined by mathematical formula so each and every average should be having its own mathematical formula of interpreting fourth one is it should be affected it should not be affected by abnormal extreme values what do you mean by abnormal extreme values uh, in the free while plotting the frequency distribution table we'll be saying uh, less than 10 or else at last uh, uh, greater than 80 more than so some value or less than some value so these things these type of extreme values should not affect our average okay that's the actual thing okay next followed by this it should be capable of further algebraic treatment okay we are having set of values on them we have we have find the average let us say mean median whatever the thing in case if you want to f go for further analysis then uh, that average should give the freedom to go for further analysis that is what is here the another essential thing that is it should be capable of further algebraic treatment the next one is it should possess sampling stability okay so what do you mean by sampling st stability let us say out of 50 students i'll not be going with all 50 students i'll be uh, choosing some let us say randomly i am choosing 15 students or 20 students now i would like to know what is the average marks of these 20 students so if i go through the average this average of 20 students almost should be equal to the average of almost approximately should be equal to the average of 50 students then i will say yes the sample what i have chosen is uh, almost it is uh, saying what is going to happen with these 50 students it should happen with this average okay that's another essential thing similarly it should be easy to calculate for an open-end distribution as I told you earlier, in case if they are the distribution is open-ended, less than or else you are greater than, like that. If the distribution is of such a nature, then also we need to easily calculate the average. So, these are the requisite or essential things that need to be there in any good average. Next, now let us understand what are the different types of averages. Totally, there are five different types of averages. The first one is arithmetic mean, median, mode geometric mean and harmonic mean so these are the five different averages we can use any one depending upon the given problem okay among these uh, five different types of averages the first three that is arithmetic uh, sorry the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean and harmonic mean so the arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean so in order to find them we'll be using certain mathematical formulas but on the other hand median mode yes we will be using mathematical formulas in spite that we can easily identify them just by uh, plotting the graph also 
okay you need not have to consider uh, mathematical formula so that's why arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean are mathematical averages okay so that's why they are referred as mathematical averages on the other hand median and mode are are, are called as positional averages nothing but using the position we will identify the average value in which particular place in the x y plane in which particular place the particular median comes mode comes we will be identifying them so that's why they are referred as positional averages they will be indicating the actual position of the median and mode average values so in this particular video we have studied what is the different uh, requisites or characteristics of uh, univariate data and we have also studied what is meant by the measure of central tendency and their different types of averages. Thank you.